Hey guys, welcome to the very first video of the, let's call it the project swap. And today we're going to remove the engine. Step number one, remove the battery. That includes disconnecting the battery. Drain the coolant. There's a plug right on passenger side, right underneath the radiator. Undo that, wait for it to drain, or remove the, the big hose, the bottom hose, and uh, drain the coolant that way. So battery gone. Remove the obvious hoses here and there. Remove the radiator plate. The two mounts went back in the trunk, the filter. Coolant is still draining. Always a mess. Top radiator hose. Still got to do the bottom radiator hose and unplug the fence, which is one guy here. And I think there is another. Yeah, there is a harness right on both sides. So remove those and this whole thing is ready to Re to be removed this is the radiator plug I was talking about now I actually undid this fully and the coolant did not drain it was just stuck in there what you do you open up any of these plugs and it's gonna start coming down next we're gonna remove the inner cooler this should be easy enough one bolt 12 mil here another 12 mil on the other side this hose obviously not going to remove the blow valve i'm going to remove this hose the, the 8 mil here i want to save on this gasket i know it's new i think the bolt on this yeah it's right on, underneath why is this oily ha huh, we got oil that's interesting it's probably coming out of the intercooler Look at this, you see this? Ha, huh, I guess good thing we're replacing the engine. And there's another hose right there, eight mil. Update. All right, intercooler out. I actually did not remove the hose from the intercooler, but from the uh, engine intake. And same over here from the turbo. So this is how that looks. And the bracket, well, this is custom, whatever. Guy before me did this, that did the swap. So now that the intake side turbo, the cold side turbo is now exposed, put something in there. I just happen to have a clean bag, okay, or some kind of paper, whatever. Stick it in there so nothing falls in there. And that's how that looks now. Okay, as far as these guys go, I'm gonna remove the belt, AC belt, Undo this 12 mil here. Then you can loosen up this long bolt. This will bring the tensioner up and you can remove the belt. Same thing for this guy. You undo or just, just loosen this 12 mil and then bring this up. This will bring the alternator down and you can take this belt off. The alternator is gonna go for sure. Obviously you gotta unplug it. Unplug the air pump. All these little connections over here so we can throw this this harness right on this side along with the AC compressor and I'm not sure yet if the air pump is gonna have to get removed or it can stay not sure yet I'm thinking it's gonna have to get removed so you have these clamps there's one clamp here there's a plug here there's a plug underneath the pump AC has to go because I don't want to empty the Freon. So it's just, it's, it's going to sit all this time. It's just going to sit connected right over here in this area. The power steering pump, I usually take them out. You can do the same thing to the pump because sometimes these bolts that hold the power and steering pump, they get stuck. Actually, just by removing, you know, a pump that was never taken out you sometimes strip these threads aluminum threads easy to strip guys so when you tighten anything up just go easy okay so this i may also swing over to this side 
All right, so the front area, update soon. All right, this is the AC tensioner. Not good, needs to be replaced. Okay, so I forgot to mention you need to loosen this one up also so the alternator comes down. All right, so this harness, it's kind of waiting on the compressor to be out. So with it, with the AC compressor, compressor I'm gonna take, well, I can leave the bracket in because there's this one nasty bolt that's way up there. Probably won't even see it. All right, good news on the air pump. Two bolts, one here, one here on the left side of it and this clamp that's it and then there's these where is it this plug and that's it and it it's came out and we have a better look on that bolt that's behind that holds on the bracket the one that's vertical right in the dead center on your screen that's the bolt you need to take out if you want to remove the compressor with the bracket the difficulty of that rear bolt for the compressor bracket it's because on the 04s to 07s the intake is also in the way on this one not so much i guess the intake is a, a bit slimmer over here so you can ha actually have once you remove this i guess what is this the evap solenoid i'm guessing then you can on a kind of a, an extended swivel extension you can get to it it's a 14 mil so that's out all right now that the compressor is free along with the bracket which is a plus remember this line stays so i'm going to remove the these fuel lines i believe this is the return this is the evap and this would be the feed this could be the feed i'm not sure but i believe i'm Let's say 75% sure that this is the return. So there are these special kind of tools. It's these guys here. Let's see if this one will fit. No, this one will not fit because of this. But the idea is you put it over the line and just shove it in there. Same thing with the bottom. So I cannot use this actually, which sucks. But I can still undo these with, a, with two small flat screwdrivers. Just find the tabs. There's going to be a tab. I don't know. You're probably not going to see it. But there's right now I can see two tabs. There's one here and one here. Just opposite opposite of each other. Just uh, stick two flat screwdrivers in there. Light, you know, go easy on it. And just kind of open them up. And this should slide out. This green clip will either stay or or go with it either way it doesn't matter once you install this back you want to put the clip back into the line into this guy here and then it kind of clips in when you put it back in but we're going to be doing an e85 install remember so these are going to be different so you can either remove it if you're having a hard time with these remove them from here it's just a small clamp uh so either or okay i'm going to try it here because I'm, I'm going to, have to remove it from here anyways so once these are out of the way then this ac hose will be nice and straight and i can rest this compressor right in here i should probably mention there's pressure in the system still so you can do two things either when you're ready to remove it put a, a rag whatever over the line so it doesn't fuel doesn't splash in your eyes or right before you start doing anything when it's still all together run the car and remove the ignition fuse or fuel pump fuse or uh, relay uh what else you can remove maybe the crank sensor which is right here basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to kill the engine while it's still running so the fuel it's still it kind of drains the fuel burns the fuel out of the lines that's that's pretty much it couldn't couldn't do it to leave this one on i actually had no fuel pressure just a small drip so didn't even need my old shorts and that's what it looks like that's the, the two tabs 
that I was talking about. Moving on now from that corner all the way to the front and this side nothing is connected to the engine anymore. Moving on to the back we got the two hero hoses pretty self-explanatory two clamps twist them and then remove them and then we got the starter we got you got power here ground remove that and then there's two bolts on the starter yes you, we can you know start removing you can remove all the bolts from the block the engine's not gonna move trust me okay then you can raise it whatever the engine or the transmission you know start removing it but you can remove everything every single bolt possible including the mounts everything and then you can attach the cherry picker or whatever you got so starter 14s then the slave cylinder here two 14s that's gonna stay here we're gonna replace that then this pitch mount you can loosen this up remove this one and kind of point it up I loosened this 10 mil up so I can have a little bit more movement on the AC line, but probably not necessary. Don't worry about this twist. It's going to be like that for months, okay? Not, nothing's going to happen. It's going to go back to its original shape. Now start tucking everything over towards the engine, whatever you didn't remove, vacuum lines, harnesses, whatever you've got. Coming to the other side so we can unbolt the dump pipe. Well, it's, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to go underneath. You're gonna un unbolt the downpipe from the midpipe, unbolt the downpipe from the turbo, and that's that's it. All the oil lines and stuff like that stays. And, you know, not much on this side. Obviously, you're gonna unplug this. This is the power steering line here. This this stays, and just gotta undo the power steering pump and probably just swing it over here. Yeah, here's the plug for the auto sensor. I'm gonna unplug that. No, or can no? It actually, never mind. It can it can stay? Okay, so it's actually so that's cool. That's actually less work than the uh, on the O6 STI. That is cool. It might still be in the way. See the auto sensor right there, right to the right of my light. It may hit the frame, so we may have to remove that. Whoa! Yeah, holy shit. Which is right here. Easy. Here hoses out. Like a dumbass, forgot to put the pan underneath the hero hoses. And a lot of coolant spilled. So I had to clean that up. That took a while. Anyways, the slave is off. You don't need to take the slave cylinder off because it sits on the transmission but just to have more access to the you know black and transmission i took it off pitch mount off loosen and did this up hero hoses right here loose starter out it's gonna set it down for now all the bolts on it well besides two i'm gonna show you on this side we got the nuts and bolts for the turbo out there's one right underneath in this area uh, you can only use a wrench on that which is also a 14 the open end the closed end on the wrench won't even fit but luckily for me that was loose that one that the, the nut also all but five bolts on the power steering pump were loose i sh i mean one was out this this far <laughs> yeah that's the guy same guy that did the timing belt on the 2.5, the previous engine. Watch the other, the first episode, the introduction. But yeah, anyway, so this is loose. I already undid the mid pipe to the down pipe. But the guy put some kind of uh, glue, like this grayish uh, cement thing, whatever you connect uh, or plug up exhaust holes with it, or you can apply that on uneven exhaust flanges and whatnot. And that's actually stuck together, which is surprising. So I need to uh, kind of persuade it and the dump pipe will come off. All that's left at this point is two nuts on the transmission to the block, which are obstructed by both CV axles. Now you can, I'll, I'll show you. That's why I took the axle nuts off so I can take the axles out, but you don't have to. The axles go into the transmission. I should have mentioned that before. Let's go down there. 
So this is the exhaust, that's that's the glue I'm talking about. Or some kind of silicone, I don't know what the hell. So two fourteens. Then it holds on on this bracket here that's still on it because that's glued. Then you gotta unplug this O2 sensor from here. I need a new creeper. Oh. So I actually undo the bottom bolt on the starter. It's, it's gonna be easier for you to undo the this while the top mount top one still holds it. Then there's a bolt down there. And this is the nut that I'm talking about. I'm gonna remove you can if you have a swivel, it's easy. If you got a swivel universal socket, it's actually also easier, I think. And these, the on the L6 STIs, I'm going to remove the axles anyways. So might as well remove them now. Same thing on this, exactly the same thing on this side on the block. And there is the turbo and this is the nut. So total five on the turbo downpipe. And that's the kind of a difficult one. The O2 sensor stayed because it's super tight. Tried a long as extension, didn't work. Just unplugged it, I'm gonna try and get it out. If I can, I'm gonna have to heat it up and take it out. And here are the nuts for the mounts. There's one here and one on the other side. And also accessible because of the sway bar. On the O6, again, sway bar is straight and you can't get away, but it's easier to loosen up the sway bar. On this one, not necessary. I think this guy served its purpose. 15 years? I think I had this thing. I wonder if there's a date. Probably not. Fix the creeper. All right, guys, everything is unbolted. There's nothing else connecting the engine to the body. And the, well, the, it is connected to the transmission still, but it's not bolted down anymore. Remove those axles, which again, you don't have to. I'm gonna let this drain overnight. And the coolant still dripping, making, making a mess. That's where the coolant is dripping from. I'm gonna plug it. When I'm ready to remove it, I'm gonna plug it up. Exhaust is out. So now I'm actually thinking, I've, I did so many engines. You know, obviously I got, I got a checky, uh, checky cherry picker for an engine hoist. I'm gonna get me one of these hanging things be between the engine and the engine hoist so I can tilt and whatnot. Tomorrow, I'm gonna call it a day today, tomorrow we're gonna think about where to mount it. I always do find like a threaded hole on this side and across. So in this case, I would probably mount it. There's a bolt hole right there. So that's what I would, or there's another one there. So I, would, I usually what I do is just run a a chain across and grab that chain and yank it out. This is a very light engine, so, you know, nothing to, even if you're mounting to a 12 mil, okay, on one side, it's not gonna come out. This here, guys, is a engine removing uh, bracket plate and this mounts on top of the intake manifold once you take the carburetor off so this is nearly all v8 engines on the classic american muscle cars four 12 mil bolts or 12 mil half inch is what i mean that's it that's all the that's how big the studs are half inch which is similar to to a 13. And you know, and this and they these guys pull the engine, which is cast iron, which is which also the, the the heads can be cast iron, the intake itself can be cast iron, with the transmission. Okay, that's like hundreds and, hun and hundreds of pounds, and these both don't come out. So what I'm saying is a, a 14 and a 12. That's what I've been always doing. That's plenty for the two bolts. 
to hold on to the to the engine via chain. But like I said, you know, once always you you pick the engine up, you know, you finally separate it from the transmission. Then it's all going sideways, you know, wants to spin and whatnot. So that's just gonna. I should have bought it, bought it a long time ago. So see you in a split second, which is for me going to be tomorrow. And we're back. So this is what I've bought. This was thirty dollars, I think, by the one and only Harbor Freight Pittsburgh, the best. So I actually just noticed, like an idiot. I attach this bolt to the transmission <laughs> so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna remove this this line here and just put it there I actually had to chase these holes this one and this one not in use for some reason but they worked out all right so I'm gonna switch that bolt that bracket and we'll see how long it's gonna take me I can already see signs of separation right here and there you know you know the the very first time i took my the engine out of my 06 sti it was uh 2020 was it no uh, 19 beginning one of 19 i think it took me hours hours and hours to separate it i ended up using a snap-on air hammer with a, a sharp chisel and just just went across on top it was just it what happens is the pins I'll show you when it's out they freeze up the guide pins whatever you want to call them that are on the side of the bell housing there's one on each side and they just get corroded and won't give up so once it's out we're gonna lubricate on those pins so so in case next time you want to take your engine out it's gonna be much easier I am hoping the guy that installed this 2.0 did that so I won't have any trouble let's do it you really want a, a jack underneath your transmission right, we got lift off now I have no separation yet. Now I'm gonna just kinda drop it. See if it's we got separation. An eighth of an inch gap. Alright, we're good. Now I should mention since this is a push style clutch, I'll show you later when it's out, and not a pull style, I don't need to worry about any pin removal or whatnot from the fork the clutch fork thingy all right so now i'm gonna raise it enough so the studs sticking out from the the mounts are just enough to clear the actual cross member okay and now just a matter of pulling. I think I may have to remove the turbo. What the hell? Now the driver's side wants to come off, but the passenger side not so much. Okay, just making sure the jack is still on the transmission. So you know when once they're away, the transmission doesn't just drop. Something is catching on the passenger side. Yeah, it is the turbo on the transmission. I knew it. Ah, let's see if some brute force can fix that. I'm gonna loosen up the turbo. The three nuts that hold it. Sure, 
my flashlight. There. The lifting is actually disconnected. Yes. All right. Out we go. Mining the auto sensor and the AC line on this side. All right, as soon as you clear the bumper, you want to drop it low. So if it does fall, it's got a shorter distance to land. This is what I was talking about. Look at this. I mean, yeah. Now it makes me wonder if this transmission is actually the original transmission. Who knows? We can check numbers, but... Whatever. So this is the so the man, the slave cylinder is this way and it pushes the fork towards the back, right? So this throw out bearing will actually push the pressure plate. Now on STIs, this is the other way around. Well, the slave cylinder is on the other side, I believe. Is it? Yeah, see that? So that's going to be a pull. Since this is pushing this way, this guy goes, moves back. So it's actually pulling on the throttle bearing. And that's the marks of the throttle bearing right over here. Look at this nice crack. <laughs> All these turbos crack over here. Now this is fine. You can, you can you see this? You can still run this turbo. I actually did mine because it ended up it was maybe a quarter of an inch away from the turbine okay and that's bad news so this is the spot that i couldn't clear but loosening the turbo helped obviously and these are the guide pins that i was talking about one here and one here the other one stayed on the block or on the transmission and you can see this guy did grease them up there's still grease on here and here's the other This throttle bearing was actually replaced not too long ago. I suppose we are going to, well, I am, clean this up, maybe get rid, of, get rid of some rust here and there. They always rust over here in this area. Most likely replace these radiator mounts. You can get them cheap from uh, Rock Auto. I think like seven bucks, ten bucks maybe each. I'm gonna paint them also so they last a little longer. And uh, fix a few rust areas here and there. So that's it for the engine removal video. Now if I want to put this engine on a stand, which I'm probably going to, I need to remove the, the clutch pressure plate. And uh, that's gonna give me enough room here I'm going to probably just reuse these studs here and one bolt here or here, whatever, and use those to mount it on the engine stand. Then we can flip it around, make more mess. At this, at this point, I don't even know if I'm removing the intake. I'm not sure what's going on to the new fully built engine. I'm sure some things will get transferred, but I don't know. It's not up to me, really. Alright guys, up next is the transmission removal. See you then.